Right now, let's get to our Where's the Money report. And today we are talking about work from home. You know, millions of Americans had to make that transition when the pandemic hit. And now some folks have gotten used to it. But now that many companies say that it's time to come back to the office, it's bringing on a whole new wave of anxiety. It is important to recognize that, you know, that anxiety tends to increase when we actually don't do the behavior that we're anxious about, right? So we we really want to get ourselves out there. So some great advice for those having to make the transition back, but what about the people who just really don't want to go? So joining us now to talk about negotiating a work from home or maybe even just a hybrid schedule. We have manager partner at Shapiro Negotiations, Andres Lares. Thanks so much for being with us. And so we want to ask, first of all, you know, of course, everyone's situation is different. Some might find working from home made them happier and more efficient. How do you approach that conversation with your employer? Well, it definitely has to be done delicately and it has to be done delicately because there's really uh, there's a lot to the decision, right? So while we personally often it's just human nature thinking about ourselves in the sense of, you know, uh, in my role, it makes a lot of sense for me able to work from home. I've proven that I've been able to work from home. There's a lot that goes into the decision for the employer, right? So allowing you to work from home sets a precedent for others. And for example, they may have a lot of investment in their lease. So the first thing is to be empathetic about the employer situation and think about it from their shoes before you approach them because that is, is really important and can and significantly increase your chances of being successful. I think that's good advice for a lot of things in life, you know, trying to approach that kind of with an empathetic mindset. So let's just say, for example, the employer is dead set on having everyone return. Is this a conversation that you would think would be worth pursuing again or like revisiting in a little bit? Should you, for lack of a better word, keep pestering your employer until you get what you want? Well, uh, there's a fine line between when you're pestering, but it, if it's very important to you, it, it's certainly something that we wouldn't suggest that you, that you not share, that you not bring up. But the two things to bring up, if you are being empathetic and you're making the ask, then I think the two things you wanna consider is, you know, how often do you do it? And you definitely wanna bring it up. And the second is, you want to make sure that at the end of every conversation, there's some action item where it's still, it's not sort of lingering. So one of the issues where I think it often feels like it's pestering is you have a conversation about it and then it ends a little bit nebulously and then nothing happens. And so if we make sure to say, okay, just so I make sure I understand, we're going to revisit this in a couple of weeks or should I make sure I understand I'm supposed to get back to you with a proposal on how many days a week I would work from home. And the idea is to make sure that happens. And so then it can move from pestering to sort of moving it forward. The progress may feel slow, but there is at least some progress. And you mentioned right then and there, like, I guess, coming with some sort of like, well, here's what I would like to do, et cetera, et cetera. Would you also recommend maybe something, someone coming with, um, this is why I'm really great at home, like maybe a list with like concrete, you know, things that the employer could expect from you if you're going to be stationed at your house, you know, going forward? Yes, absolutely. And but when you do make that list, it's important to think of all the people that might be involved. For example, let's say you are, you know, you're uh, working in finance and your boss is the head of finance. Well, the head of finance may be involved as he or she's your direct boss, but then potentially HR, general manager, other people are involved in the decision. And so when you make the list, again, it's important to think about all the people that will be involved. So for example, I am very effective at home. I've proven that over the year and I'll be available for our Monday meetings, virtually great. But also some of the other aspects, like, for example, maybe not asking for all five days a week for that precedent and, you know, making sure whatever it is. So really think about all the people that are involved and all the people that are going to have to vet and approve the decision and try to come up with a few things that will help each person sort of justify and approve it. Yeah, because it is a team, right? It's not just about one person. It's about a team. Some great some great advice. We really appreciate it as, as we enter this whole new world. <laughs> of working. <laughs> well, uh, good luck to everyone trying to do that negotiation and thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.